Okay, in this problem, we've got a cannon that shoots a cannonball up and down. That's not very parabolic, but it's supposed to be. And the height that it shoots the cannonball is a height of 32 meters. And the initial velocity that the ball leaves the cannon is uh, 90 meters per second. Uh, in addition, the mass of the ball is 2 kilos. Okay? Now, quick question you got to ask yourself is is it possible that 90 meters per second is going to be able to reach a height of 32 meters let's hope so or else this problem is uh, going to be impossible so what we should do here is oh by the way let's we didn't we haven't even specified the question here at the top of the flight, find the velocity here. So the magnitude and the direction. Well, for one thing, we can easily answer right now, and that is at this location here, at the highest point, the velocity is going to be directly horizontal to the right. Because at the highest point, the vertical velocity is going to be zero. And therefore, all the velocity is going to be towards the right. But how fast is it going at that location? Well, we'll have to do a little bit of conservation of energy to find that out. We can say initial energy equals final energy. Initially, all we have is kinetic energy. We're starting at zero down here. And finally... All we have is gravitational potential energy. Or do we? No, not quite. We also have at the top kinetic energy. That's final. Okay? So, let's see if we can figure it out. This initial kinetic is 1 half mvi squared. The final gravitational potential is mgh. And then we've also got that. And what are we looking for? We're looking for the final velocity. So let's solve algebraically. First, 1 half mv initial squared minus mgh. And now we're going to solve for vf. So we're going to now this is equal to obviously one half m v final squared. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the whole equation by a two and divide by m. So I'm going to go two times one half m v i squared minus m g h and divide by m. There you go. That's going to equal. Uh, the final velocity squared. Now before I continue, there's a few nice things I can do here. Obviously, I should have realized this a step earlier, but look it. I'm going to be able to cancel out all my masses. So in fact, we really didn't need this piece of information after all. Second of all, uh, so I can just cross this out. Um, in addition, let's go ahead and multiply the 2. So we're going to have this 2 canceling that 2. So we're just going to left with this here. And then over on this side, it's going to be minus 2gh. <coughs> and now we can take the square root. And that's going to be equal to our final velocity. 
okay? So let's plug our numbers in. Our initial velocity is <coughs> 90 meters per second. We square that. Minus 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times a height of 32 meters. And that's going to give us our final answer. Let's get our trusty RPN calculator. And we're going to go 90 uh, squared. 2 enter 9.8 times 32 times. And we're going to subtract that. And then we're going to take the square root. And we get 86 point four meters per second at the top. That's our final answer. <coughs> and one thing I want to show you guys, which is kind of cool, we used energy method to solve this problem, right? Starting from here. But look at the mathematics we end up with. See this math? That looks kind of familiar to me. I wonder if you remember a kinematics equation where you say v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta d. Let's see if we can solve for v final. Well, look what it is. Look at that. What's my initial my initial velocity squared? Yeah. What's a? That's g and what's my delta d? It's h. Look at this. <coughs> and look at that. They're identical. Oh, actually no, they're not. This one's a plus and this one's a minus. Uh, why is that different? Um, oh, I know why. Because here, this is a kinematics problem, and g is going to be negative 9.8. So if here, in this problem, this was not a kinematics problem, I used a positive 9.8. And so effectively, um, it becomes the same equation because this g is negative. So there you go. Kind of interesting. Thanks for watching that one.